All right. In the last couple of tutorials, we've been working on this aquarium, and that usually goes over very well in the classes I work with. But the kids end up wanting to have a little more action in here. And they don't go to aquariums for relaxation. And because when we go look through sprites, kids like to look around. I always ask if they can add one more fish. This one down here at the bottom, the shark. And so we do. And I'll do that with you here. We had a shark. Whoa, he comes in huge. Just like all our other fish, because our aquarium's a little small. So let's shrink it down a little bit. Not too big, because he does have to be larger than other fish, right? Scary shark. Okay. What is the shark going to do? Well, let's have him move around randomly, like the other fish. So we can go to the crab and start off with the shark moving around. And see how that works. And that seems to oh, work all right. Except, yeah, we have our shark going upside down. We know to go into rotation style. Change that rotation style. Now our shark works like all the other fish. But we want our shark to eat these guys. That's just what sharks do. It's in their nature. So we need to add some rules to the shark if it behaves in a different way. We'll do an if. We'll say if he's touching, like right now, he's touching that yellow fish and he's about to touch the purple fish. So if he's touching, we go to the sensing section and grab touching. And here again, we use this little triangle to show there's more things that can be touching. The mouse pointer, the edge, the crab, the fish, the fish. Let's go with trash. touching fish one. If he's touching fish one, what should he do? Well, we're going to eat them. And what's kind of interesting with these actors is that they really only control themselves. So when he's touching fish one, what should the shark change? Well, we're going to say the shark changes what he's thinking and he's going to think. We get my key fingers on the right keys. He's going to think, yum. Keyboard is all off. Oh, there you go. So he touches that fish and he thinks, yum. But he doesn't eat it. Okay. So we now have to go over to fish one and change fish one's code. Where now? Here, if fish one is touching the shark, right? They're sort of touching each other. That's the way we do it. So when the shark touches a fish, the shark thinks, yum. And the fish is going to do what? It has to sense. Is it touching the shark? Right? They're going to touch each other. And then maybe it will think, oh, no. Oh, no. But it doesn't have that long to think. Maybe 0 0.2 seconds. And now you see that they're sort of just on top of each other. And they're just constantly thinking that. And when they're thinking, they stop moving. So we also need our fish to hide after it gets touched by the shark. Now, this is not quite working. Let's see if we spread them out a little bit. Maybe it can't think for 0.2 seconds. Let's hit the green flag. I'll try that point two again. Point five seconds. And there you go. That seems to work out okay. So the fish thinks, oh no, really quickly. That's his last thought. And the shark gets to think yum for a little while. But our fish doesn't come back. Every time I do this in class with these kids, what we use is hide to make something disappear. But then a lot of times in class, the question is, well, my thing disappeared. My fish disappeared, never came back. Whenever you use hide, you should go back to using show somewhere to make sure that you always show your fish or your character. When the green flag is set, make sure you show it. 
Here, we're going to hide. And then maybe you have to wait a little while. And then let's make the fish come back. So that there's a new fish that comes back in. And if we wait just one second, the shark is going to still be nearby. So maybe if we wait 10 seconds, it'll have a chance to get away. So here, this fish, who avoided the shark for a little bit. And now, run away. Oh, he did run away. Oh, no. That time he didn't. We wait 10 seconds, and the fish should show up again after a little bit right here. And there you go. Just to be eaten again. All right. So this works out pretty good. <coughs> for that one fish. Let's do it for the other fish and the crab. So now the shark is touching fish one. We want to say, or if he's touching fish two, right? And there's this operator block here, conveniently called or. So we'll pull the oar over, we'll drop touching fish one into it, and then we'll say or touching fish two. And now we can put that in here. And now when he touches either fish, we just added that, right? The yellow fish, it will do it. So we got to fix the yellow fish, though, to make sure it disappears, just like the purple fish did. We basically want to do the same thing. And if you want to do what we showed before, you could pull this little block out, drag it and drop it on the yellow fish, and then put it back in here. And now a yellow fish, oh, it's all jumbled up in here. So grab this one, pull it aside, look at it, make sure it's what we want to do. Say, oh no, hide, wait, show yourself again and put it back up there. And now, let's see, next time the yellow fish gets touched by the shark, it should say, oh no, or think oh no, and then disappear. But our shark is not really going towards it right now. Let's help it out a little bit. It just ate that guy. Oh, our yellow fish is too fast. My goodness, this yellow fish does not want to get eaten. Well, who really does? There we go. Oh, no. Disappears. And that works. Now, the shark's not even a crab. But we know how we can make that happen, don't we? So here, we already have these two oars in the shark. We need to add a third oar for the crab. And how can we do that? we really just need to put all these three together. So we could have this ore. You notice that this ore is one of these hexagon shapes, right? It's got this little pointy side, and it takes things with the pointy side. So what's really fun about this is you can put them inside of each other over and over again. And now we can check if we're touching the crab as well. And it gets a little long, but you can see touching crab or touching the fish one or touching fish two. And so now we can put that inside our if statement. That'll be if it's not quite inside. There we go. And I'll shrink my screen just a little bit so you can read it. If touching crab or touching fish one or touching fish two, then we think yum for two seconds. All right, let's try that. Oh, this guy is just eating everything. So here he's eating the crab, but the crab is not responding and not disappearing. So we have to do the same thing that we did to get the yellow fish to disappear. Let's pull the coat out for touching the shark. Drag it, drop it on the crab. Put it back in for the yellow fish. Go to the crab, see that it's all piled up on each other. I'll blow this up a little bit more so we can see it again. That's because we just dropped it in, put it down at the bottom, 
And now the shark can just eat everything. See, when it eats, it gives that other fish a little chance to run away. Oh, the crab got eaten. But in 10 seconds, there'll be another crab. All right. So this little bit, let us learn how these sprites can figure out if they're touching each other and then behave a little differently when they do touch each other. And they behave differently, right? The shark, it's going to think yum and does that eating part, but it doesn't actually eat it. What happens is to simulate that eating action, our other sprites have to go hide a little bit. And one thing that's kind of interesting here is that this thinking, oh no, for half a second, it actually helps the shark realize that they're touching each other. Sometimes if I didn't have this think, oh no, in there, I'm editing the yellow fish now. When the yellow fish comes back, let's bring them back. If you ever need to just force the yellow fish back, there it is. When the yellow fish gets eaten, sometimes it realizes it's touching the shark and hides right away before the shark realizes that they're touching each other. So that's why having this little thought for half a second, it gives time for them both to realize they're touching each other. It's sometimes... The yellow fish might realize it's touching the shark first and the shark doesn't even get a chance to say, oh, yum, I ate you. So that's why we put this little bit in there. Think, oh, no, for a little bit just to show, oh, the fish does recognize that the shark is there and it gives the shark time to recognize the fish is there. And then they both get to do their specific actions. Let's see if this little fish. Oh. Okay. Now, since we know that we're touching the shark, we can also do something for the fish where every now and then it moves away from the shark. Right? Because we can have these things that say point towards. So let's make one of our fish just a little bit smarter. Maybe the yellow fish, since I'm working on the yellow fish right now. We could say point towards something. So if every now and then we turn and pick a random number of degrees to change, we could say sometimes every now and then we want to move away from the shark. So if let's Pick a random number, and I'll try a different way of doing it now. We'll say, if we pick a num random number from 1 to 10, and that number is 1, so 1 out of 10 times, let's point towards, not the mouse pointer, not the crab, not the fish, but the shark. And we think, well, that's not going to work. We're going to point right towards them. Well, okay. But then, after we point towards the shark, let's turn... 180 degrees. Turning 180 degrees is turning around, basically. And so we'll put towards the shark and then quickly turn around and go the other way. And now you see this little fish is just staying in this corner away from the shark. Kind of trapped in that corner. He's avoiding the shark way too much, maybe. So let's maybe make it 1 in 20 that way he can explore the world a little bit more instead of being stuck in this corner or running from the shark. Maybe even 1 in 20 is too much. 1 in 50. So sometimes you have to play around with these numbers a little bit just to get a feel for how your simulation is working, what you think looks right. Now the fish is exploring a little more. He's not as scared of the shark as he was before. And he has lived longer than the other fish and the crab. 
but just stays in the opposite corner from the shark. Okay, so I think we've covered a lot here. Oh, yep. You see it was going towards the shark and moved away. How they interact with each other, how they can tell if they're touching each other, what they can do when they want to point towards another character and then turn away, but they don't always turn away. So those are all the different ways, not even all, those are some of the different ways that these sprites can interact with each other. And we'll cover more in upcoming lessons.